The outlet Politico has fired cybersecurity reporter Eric Geller after he tweeted about the late Pope Benedict. Now, um, apparently this uh, tweet uh, ruffled some feathers. In fact, here's what he wrote. Homophobic pedophile protector and Hitler Youth alumnus dead at 95. Damn. And now he shared a link to the news report on Pope Benedict's death on December 31st. Uh, all right, so uh, brutal. I love it. <laughs> but apparently a lot of people did not. Uh, after pushback, Geller took down the tweet and wrote this. I deleted the tweet about Pope Benedict. That was offensive and in poor judgment. Yes, it was offensive, but also it was... You shouldn't have deleted the tweet. That was your uh, first mistake. Uh, but anyway, instead of, you know, being offended at the fact that the Pope absolutely did defend pedophiles, I've got details on that, right-wingers decided to do cancel culture. Margaret, uh, I'm sorry, Mary Margaret Olihan, senior reporter for the Heritage Foundation's Daily Signal, uh, replied to this tweet saying, Politico, come get your reporter. Nathan Brand, communications director for the Republican Party, tagged Politico's vice president of marketing and communications, Brad Dayspring, asked him this, quote, does this conduct cross any lines at Politico? How dare you point out things that are true? Do you have no shame, sir? Do you have no shame? The sad thing is that it worked. Dayspring re replied, yes, this tweet, uh, the tweet is a clear violation of our social media policy and was both inaccurate and offensive. Well, no, hold on. I, I agree that it is offensive. Good. <laughs> I liked the offensiveness of it. Um, but inaccuracy? Oh, no, I'm offended at that because there was nothing in there that wasn't accurate. <laughs> Uh, in fact, look, he was a Hitler Youth alumnus. Now he says later on, oh, I was forced into it. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that makes it better. Sure. Um, and look, he also protected pedophile priests. Here's an example. Germany's Munich Diocese had faulted retired Pope Benedict, uh, Benedict XVI's handling of four cases when he was archbishop back in the 70s and 80s. In, four total, in a total of four cases, we came to the conclusion that the then Archbishop Cardinal Ratzinger can be accused of misconduct, said one of the report's authors, Martin Puch. Mm. Two of those cases involved perpetrators who offended while he was in office and were punished by the judicial system, but were still kept in pastoral work without express limits on what they were allowed to do. Oh. Oh, you were you were you were punished uh, for you know abusing children. Well, come on back to work. Oh no, are we gonna watch you to make sure to protect children from you? No, no, come back to work. You're fine. You're fine. A third case, a cleric who had been convicted by a court outside of Germany, was then put into service in the Munich Archdiocese. And under, uh, under, and the circumstances speak for Ratzinger having known about the priest's, uh, I'm sorry, priest's previous history, you said. So, that's three of the four cases. Uh, now, <clears throat> as for homophobia, I, I mean, I think, uh, I think it's pretty obvious. Benedict had called uh, being gay a, quote, intrinsic moral evil. That sounds pretty homophobic to me. So homophobic, Hitler youth alumnus, which is true. Uh, and uh, yeah, protector of uh, pedophiles in the church. No, I would say he's got three for three. Mr. Geller, you have won. What is your prize being fired from Politico for being accurate? Congratulations. Because he has offended religious people, and apparently you cannot do that. Violations of company policy 
uh, said Dayspring, uh, including the social media policy, are subject to an internal review process. Violations of company policy uh, could result in disciplinary action up to and include termination. Well, that's what happened. The Daily Beast noted that a, a Fox News report that the days after uh, Dayspring's tweets, Geller changed his Twitter bio to remove any references to Politico. Additionally, on his personal website, he now refers to his time as Politico in the past tense. So, and according to a source familiar with the situation, uh, confirming to media that Geller is no longer with Politico, although the report says it remains unclear whether he resigned or was terminated. At this point, I mean, does it does it really matter the distinct? Is there a huge difference? I mean, I've heard of people being pressured to resign or just straight up fired. So, yeah. The important thing to, to point out here, though, is way to go, conservatives. You just cancel cultured somebody for people who, you know, claim to hate cancel culture. There's cancel culture. You were offended by something or you pretended to be offended and decided to go after a political reporter's job. For saying that, by the way, for something that was true, it's not like he wasn't being honest or wasn't being factual. But here's Politico giving in to the mob, the right-wing mob. Again, this wasn't about facts. It was all about decorum. You offended, you offended religious people. How dare you? How, how dare you? But did he offend Catholics? Maybe some of them, but... Honestly, if I were a Catholic, I'm not a religious person. I'm a, uh, I'm an atheist, but I would be more offended about the Pope hiding sexual abuse, and then that being covered up and not being mentioned at all. And look, some of them are. Uh, in fact, people have uh, been leaving the church. I mean, people were leaving the church beforehand, but the the string of uh, sexual abuse scandals have been, you know, accelerating that. Uh, and in fact, according to a 2019 Gallup survey, it's the most recent survey of this, so the numbers have probably changed since then, um, 31%, only 31% of Catholics rated the clergy as being highly honest. 31%. That's down from 49% in just two years. A full 44% of Catholics also uh, only reported being confident in organized religion, only 44%. So look, uh, these scandals have shaken their faith in the institution and the leaders of that institution, while not necessarily shaking their faith in, in the actual religion itself. So I, I think uh, not trusting institutions is a good thing, especially these institutions uh, that have, you know, absolute power. People are coming to the realization that there is a major problem with these institutions, religious institutions specifically. They're very easily corrupted, and it's because the more power you place in an individual, the more they're able to abuse that power without any kind of oversight or, or anyone preventing them from doing so. And look, in the case of this church, once again, power protects itself. The church protected itself at the expense of the victims. And there has been a long documented history of the church, the Catholic church doing this. And it doesn't just happen in the Catholic church. It happens in, in a lot of religious institutions and it doesn't matter which religion it is. It's when you have so much power put into, you know, a, an individual or a very small group of individuals, there will be predators among them. It's just, it's just what happens. So now uh, let's get to the hypocrisy here, right? Real quick. So recently, uh, a lot of uh, the right wing has been on these uh, moral crusades, right? Against uh, pedophiles, uh, against, you know, groomers. Now, here we have a situation where the Catholic Church, in this case, has been caught numerous times protecting pedophiles and groomers hmm. that are among their ranks. 
Are they talking about that? No, they're not. They're actually talking about LGBTQI plus teachers in schools and calling them the pedophiles and groomers, pointing at people that do drag shows. Oh, then no, those are the groomers. While you're ignoring the actual pedophiles in the churches. And by the way, getting reporters fired for pointing it out. They don't actually care at all. All they did is they saw a reporter from an outlet they considered to be liberal and decided, hey, we're offended. Let's do cancel culture. <laughs> 